Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over density altitude. Hi, I'm Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over density altitude. Uh, as I discussed before, pressure altitude, um, pressure altitude and density altitude are critical to understand um, because the performance operating handbook charts of aircraft um, relate the performance of the aircraft to those types of altitude. Pressure altitude, initially you look up in the charts, on the left-hand side of charts mostly, and then you factor in the temperature to get effectively the density altitude. And it is that altitude um, that along with the weight information that tells us how the aircraft is literally going to perform for takeoff and, and, and landings as well as crews. So it's critical that you understand both um, um, pressure altitude and density altitude. Today I'm going to focus on density altitude. So density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. And the best way to describe it is density altitude is what the plane feels like it's performing at. If, for example, the um, airport elevation was a thousand feet above sea level normally and you get a report from the AWOS saying that the density altitude is 3,000 feet basically that plane is going to uh, depart or take off as if it truly was performing at 3,000 feet up in the air already and it, as you can understand as you go up higher in elevation um, the performance of the aircraft diminishes and it diminishes for a number of reasons we're going to get into that now so again just to reiterate what a standard atmosphere is, it's when the mercury is 29.92 inches at 15 degrees C Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. Now if we look at this chart here, we see sea level down here and basically the top of the troposphere here. And we show the aircraft flying in three different columns here, um, but at different temperatures. Uh, one at 15 degrees C, which is a standard temperature. Uh, zero to C degrees C or 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, freezing um, or 30 degrees Celsius at um, again sea level. So you got a hot day, a, a standard day, and a cold day. So let's say on a standard day you want to fly halfway up um, the atmosphere and if you were to do that you'd have let's say roughly the same amount of air molecules above and below you um, or a proportional amount um, above you and below you. If you were to, uh, to fly on a hot day, like 30 degrees Celsius, those air molecules are further apart and the actual height of the troposphere actually rises. And so if you wanted to fly halfway up the atmosphere, um, you would actually be flying at a higher altitude than on the standard day. Similarly, if you were to go out and fly on a very cold day, the air molecules are much more tightly packed and to fly halfway up those air molecules um, you'd actually be flying at a lower altitude. So even though you may get a same indicated altitude number on your altimeter, in reality based on the temperature you're flying at truly a different height. And that gives you some idea um, in regards to what how temperature affects the stack up in the atmosphere and how high you're actually flying versus what you think you're flying. There are three factors that influence density altitude. The first one are higher temps. With higher temps, the air molecules are further apart. You're going to have lower density or effectively higher density altitude. The second factor is high humidity. More uh, moisture in the air means less room and space for air molecules. So you get less um, air density or density altitude because of high humidity. And the last uh, factor is high elevation. The higher you go up in the atmosphere, the air molecules are just uh, further apart due to gravity. So these three factors affect density altitude. Now it's important to understand that density altitude's uh, major effect is on normally aspirated engines. Um, a turbocharged engine basically ensures that you have the same density of air as you go up in altitude. But with a normally aspirated engine, as you go up in altitude, uh, the air gets thinner, lower density, and as a result there's less oxygen molecules or air molecules uh, going into the engine or the carburetor. And as a result of that you're going to get less performance as you go up in altitude. 
If you're a turbocharged aircraft, different story. But in a normally aspirated aircraft, it's a major factor um, in the performance of the aircraft as it climbs in altitude. So now I'm going to show you how to calculate density altitude uh, using a simple mathematical formula. All right, so let's do a real life example in calculating density altitude. So we're going to cruise at 5,000 feet. The temperature at sea level is 30 degrees C. The barometric pressure is reading 30.42 inches. We'd plug that 30.42 inches into our altimeter and we'd go and cruise at 5,000 feet and we would see that we would truly be flying at 5,000 feet. Um, one other important factor is that the change in temperature, the difference in temperature uh, per one degree C, we'd actually add 120 feet extra higher in altitude to accommodate for the density altitude differences. So, first thing we're going to do is calculate pressure altitude. We have the 30.42 inches. We um, subtract 29.92 inches from it, which is a standard atmosphere of pressure. Five, we get 500, we multiply times, or 0.5, we multiply times 1,000, we get 500 feet. We would subtract 500 feet from our true altitude that we plan to fly to get our pressure altitude of 4,500 feet. Now we need to calculate the density altitude. Well, if we look over here at this chart, we can see that in a standard um, atmosphere, at sea level, we should see 15 degrees C. At 1,000 feet, 13 degrees C. In uh, 2,000 feet, 11 degrees C. And as we work our way up to 5,000 feet, we should see 5 degrees C. However, we're not flying in a standard atmosphere. Instead, what we see at the surface is 30 degrees C. And if we work our way up this chart, we would see 28 degrees C, 26 degrees C, 24 degrees C, 22 degrees C, 20 degrees C. So if we had a thermometer on the outside of the aircraft, we would see that we were reading 20 degrees C uh, based on a normal um, atmosphere environment. So there's a difference between the 5 degrees C that we're, we should see and the 20 degrees C that we're actually measuring. That difference we take as 20 minus 5, which equals 15. We take that 15 degrees difference, multiply it times 120, and we come up with 1,800 feet. So what do we do with that 1,800 feet? Well, since the outside temperature is a lot hotter, the air density is much thinner, we're going to actually add that 1,800 feet to our pressure altitude to get the density altitude. So the, pressure, the density altitude is going to be the 4,500 feet plus the 1,800 feet, which works out to 6,300 feet. Our density altitude is 6,300 feet. That is what we would use to determine the performance of the aircraft craft at the 5,000 feet. And we would again look in the performance charts of the aircraft. We'd actually uh, put in the pressure altitude of 4,500. Uh, looking at the left-hand column, we'd go over for the temperature that would be along the bottom uh, of what we're seeing at sea level and then work our way up, and we would see that we would effectively come out with a density altitude of 6,300 feet. And that is how the aircraft is going to feel like it's working in and perform to rather than the 5,000 feet. So it's not going to perform as well um, by a difference of 1,300 feet because we're higher up in elevation, the air molecules are thinner, and as a result, the amount of oxygen coming into the engine is going to be reduced. We can also use an E6B flight computer or whiz wheel to determine the density altitude. We have our pressure altitude here. We have our air temperature here. All we do is uh, take our outside air temperature that we measured to be 20 degrees C and line it up with the 4,500 uh, feet of pressure altitude that we had. And then we look up here at the density altitude window. And we see roughly about, if I line it up correctly, right about 6,300 feet, which is what we just calculated. So that's how to determine density altitude, again, using your E6B flight computer. So that's density altitude. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it is, why we're so concerned about it, and how to determine or calculate it, or how to find it in, using an E6B whiz wheel. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I come out with my next video.